I'm Travis Payne. And I'm Stacy Walker. Welcome, Welcome to, to Full Out, Out with the real Travis and Stacy. On YouTube, finally. What? We made it. Oh my God. Now it's like, I kind of don't like it because it used to be like, you know, we're just doing the audio podcast. I, and I could just roll in here with my hair in a bun. Uh-huh. And I mean, I still don't wash my hair today, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> hey, I've just been waiting for YouTube because, you know, we're visual people. And it's so cool. And because we are so attractive and thin and gorgeous, mm. you're welcome. You know what I'm saying? It was like we started our season one because it was audio only because that was the sort of format. And we worked on that and we realized that, you know, we want to see you and we want you to see us more importantly. <laughs> I okay. mean it. I'm just saying. I think that no, you know, it's I, the right thing to I, do. I'm obsessed with YouTube. I watch it 90 percent of the time. He does. Many of my favorite creators are there, and I just am so inspired by what they do. And I was like, we need a visual component. I know, and and I'm glad for you because I I don't watch YouTube <laughs> ever, I, except for dog videos. Right. If there's little like I those, understand. but that's not even YouTube really. Speaking of dogs, yeah. I know. We have a new baby. Yes. Yes. Dan thought I went to Whole Foods, but in <laughs> fact, I went to the Van Nuys shelter. <laughs> That's what happened. I called him and he started laughing. He was like, bring him home. Right. But he's really special. Uh-huh. He's really special. And he yeah. looks at you so lovingly. Uh-huh. Even though, I don't know if I told you, but I think he's I got a little impairment. His okay. sight and okay. hearing is a little impaired uh-huh. or he hasn't grown into it yet. Yeah. Because he's a baby baby, right? He's like uh, still probably, probably got him at 10 weeks. Okay. And now he's probably 11. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's had some problems. He's got influenza right now. <laughs> yes. And he went right. to the hospital cause he wasn't eating. And oh. I know we had all sorts of things this week, but oh, he's ha- a model like us. It happened. He's very dramatic. <laughs> he's very, and he talks a lot anyway. <laughs> he's a talker. Like he talks. Okay. I he's love a, it. Yeah. Constantly. Wait. Yeah. One day you'll, you will. I can't wait laugh. to meet him. That's but, the... but more importantly. Yes. Not more importantly, because nothing's really more important. But right. but anyway, that's why I said, "Is Dan getting enough attention?" No, now? he's not. But I, I apologized, <laughs> and I told him we're going to have to figure out the intimacy thing right. because the super happy now we have a, a dog sleeping between us, which we both love. Yeah. But this dog might be sixty to eighty pounds. Oh my! When it's full size. Okay. And what, I mean, what are we going to do? Get a bigger bed. <laughs> but we have a king. I don't know. California king, but like Rihanna said. I have to, How you doing? yeah, I got to try to be nice to Dan and really give him some attention. I think you should. Because right now it's like very puppy, but you know, it's just hard the first couple weeks. But it's already I'm sure easier. he's happy that you're happy that you have And he baby. loves being a daddy. Yeah. He does, believe mm-hmm. me. So it's all good. That is so awesome. But I've been so excited to talk to you today because yes. you went to Madonna's concert. I did. Well, you went to it and saw yes. it, but you also worked on yes, it. Yes, I did. It was a blessing. So first of all, thank you, Luann, right? Yes, we love Luann. Our lovely Luann. She called me. She said, um, I have a gig for you. I was like, what is it? She was like, I can't tell you. I was like, okay, I'm intrigued. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so what's the music about? She was like, can't send it. I was like, okay, what do I need to do? She's like, come to New York. I was like, okay. okay. It's a business class? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was my first question. Of course. <laughs> That's a long flight, actually. It was. Yeah. Yeah. So I got there, and then I got the music, and then I was like, <gasps> it's amazing. So I got to be there, I think, about five days or something. Yeah. And uh, I hadn't seen Madonna since we did The Power of Goodbye in 1998. Wow. With Matthew Ralston. That is long time ago. It was a long ago. time. So I walked in. You know, they were we rehearsed in Brooklyn. Uh-huh. You know, so I felt very hip hop array. I know because Brooklyn's um, cool. It's a yeah, cool spot. Yeah. So did that. She walked in and I walked up to her. I was like, it's great to see you again. She was like, how long has it been? I was like, 1998. Power of Goodbye. She said, with Matthew Ralston. I said, yeah. She said, that was a good one. I uh. said, yeah. She's like, what you got for me? So. I ended up working on the Michael Jackson tribute mm-hmm. that she did. Because if you don't know, and Travis will tell you more, yeah. but she really gives a lot of, pays homage and gives a lot of respect to people she's worked with yes. throughout her whole career, yeah. whether it be Prince. dancers, Prince, yeah. Michael, you mm-hmm. know, anyway. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, it was, first of all, it was just great to see her again. And yeah. It was just great to be involved in this celebration tour because it's 40 decades, 40, four decades, 40 years, 40 four years dec- of hits. Wow. Uh, that's an amazing career. 40 years of I've hits. I've always loved her. She's always been amazing. Did she look good? She looked great. Mm. She really did. And she looked, um, she looked youthful, 
you know, but then of course, after we worked together, she had um, medical emergency. Okay, so you worked with her before, before that. Before the medical emergency. Okay. And then the tour was delayed. Yes. So, of course, when she came back from the medical emergency, she looked even better. And I think she radiates a different sort of, you know, appreciation for life. You know, mm -hmm. I think that, that episode, I think that episode put things in perspective for her more. Of course, she was already living for her children and her fans and all of that stuff. But she just had a different sort of aura. When mm -hmm. I saw her, a life. different spark for life. She did, like a she little did. different appreciation. She did, and she said, "You guys, you know." She said, "the the the most um, the most shocking thing I've ever done is to stick around." Mm -hmm. And I believe her. Mm -hmm. She was like, "You know, you beep beeps didn't think I'd be able to do it, but I'm here." Beep beep. Mm -hmm. You know, and she was just great, and she was just like she didn't care. She was just less. You know, she was just, it, it, she was realer, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. She wasn't, she didn't feel so untouchable. Mm -hmm. She felt a little more relatable this okay, time. Okay, I like it. Because the show is a, a retrospective. It's really chronicling her rise to stardom. Right. You know, and it starts from the very beginning where she couldn't get into the discos mm -hmm. in New York because she wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. You know, cut to, you know, Diplo's right in front of me because she is so cool. Right. <laughs> you know, and she's got everybody there and Cardi B wound up being on stage with her. It was just a wonderful experience. And Darrell is out there. Yep. You know, thanks to Madonna's managers and, you know, for making sure I was there as well as Darrell. But it was awesome. I'm so glad you went. Yeah. And I'm so glad that I did. Right. Because I said, Stacey, you want to go? <laughs> and she was like, well, what time does um, it start? I was like, well, it's scheduled to start at eight ish, nine ish. And I was like, I was like, okay, I can do it. I will go. I will go if you need me to. Because right. Seraldo, our yeah. dear friend, yeah. um, he was going to go, but then he had a little job come yeah. up and whatever. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm on standby. Luckily, Seraldo went because the show did not start until 10 o'clock. Yeah, at least. Yeah. But I would have been. Beside yourself. In and a I, cab. And I was going home. so hard when we passed the, you know, 930 mark and we were still like in the VIP kind of like eating. And because what, let me tell you, when we got there, first of all, you cannot bring a bag into the. Oh, I know. In the Coliseum. That anymore. happened to me going to a football game. It has to be like a clear little yes. purse. I was like, yeah. I don't have a clear purse. What I, do you mean? Isn't that weird? Gucci. I mean. They were like, no, you can take that back to your car. So we trekked back to the car to come back. And then. Um, we got in, you know, tickets were great. It was all, all that, but there was like a whole lounge area, like the, like a, like a club. Yeah. I forget what it, the crypto or club, whatever. It's a club and you walk in and there was a full spread, full catering. I mean, so nice chefs with the hats. I mean, laid out nice full bar that helps with the weight. It does. Yeah, it does. The, I thought of you when I saw all the treats and the desserts, there was a dessert station. Oh. With like chocolate fountains, the whole bit. Oh, it was so dramatic. Yeah, you didn't bring me anything? I know. I couldn't. Rude. I, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I did have some of the s'mores. I'm just still it. giving thanks that I didn't go. I, know. I am. Because we got I out am. of there. We got out of there. It was midnight-ish. It was later. It was late. At and least. The guy was so funny. I was like, well, what do you do with the... How did, does, you know, what happens? There's, there's you know, the cutoff times. And they were like, oh, no, we just pay the fines. All the whole tour, we she just starts, pay the fines. I think she starts like every show. At 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. It's not just that one. Like, yeah, she has to feel it. I think but, she has to feel oh it. Oh, my God. And you kind of want everybody late. seated. Because even at the time it was supposed to start, people, people are were still, still coming arriving, in. meandering in, Okay, talking. but 8 o'clock. How about 8.45? But 10? Yeah. I would have been panicking. What were those shows? It's just too late. Is that the movies? Or I remember there was show that must be Japan. Like when you're late, they close the doors. Right, and you can't come in until a certain time yeah. after. But that's more of a theater show. Yeah. See, Madonna should have a matinee. I would go to the matinee. I would. <laughs> I would go imagine? at two o'clock. Yeah, I would too. And even if she didn't didn't start till four, fine. I still get home in time for dinner. Fine. It's good. Day drinking. I'm good. Totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. But we should probably move on. We because should. There's so many concerts happening yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. There's so many. There's so many. I mean, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. I saw what you love. I saw. I didn't see it live, but I did see it in the theater because you, yeah. you know it was a movie. And I thought it was so well done. Ah. It was just so, it was staged brilliantly. Taylor's not really a dancer, mm -hmm. but she had dancers. Yeah. And the choreography was perfect. It yeah. wasn't all this dancing. It was yeah. like staging and big movement. Yeah, and, you love that. Oh, and her LED floors, and it was so well done. Anyway, yeah. recommend it highly. Right on. And she's doing well. 
Oh she's my really doing well. God. I mean, I think between her and Beyonce, it's really neck and neck about who oh. is, you know. And Beyonce's of, tour. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think, yeah. Beyonce, she did her Renaissance uh, tour. It was hugely successful. You know, there's three stages to that show. Wow. She's so got three piggybacks. A main hits. stage, and then you go down a runway. Oh, and oh no. No, what is the three? Three full stage setups. What? Like, Remember like how huge. Michael had two on history where they oh, leapfrog? Oh, oh, yes. She has three stages. Okay, so what that means is that, you know, you're doing one show in L.A. Mm -hmm. While you're in L.A. doing that show, there's a separate stage that's already gone to San Diego. To be built. To be built so that when she goes there for the next show, it's already there. And but meanwhile, the, the third stage is, is being broken down. Yep. Before the L.A. show. Yeah, and already going to another. So yeah. it's not just one stage moving around. It's yeah. three. It's called leapfrogging. Wow. So she's got three different stages that leapfrog. So that means there has to be three different crews. Right. Right. And there were over 150 costumes that she wore because alone. Because she changes every, every, every night to different. show. Wow. Everything. I How think is that possible? Just the time to figure that out and fittings. I mean, the fittings, but I would imagine that. If you're going to be efficient, you send all the designers your form. Yeah. So they have your form. They can make the clothes and then they send it to the stylist to do it, you know, tailoring. It's hard enough to come up with yeah. six outfits for oh, one yeah. show. Oh, you know, and do like, you know one of her concerts, the 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 sound went out? Really? You know, it fully. Sound fully went out. I think it was at Alien Superstar, I think. I could be wrong. I think it was. It was da 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 da, -da. Yeah. So it was what Alien happened? Superstar. She walked off stage. They figured it out. She was very calm. She figured it out. She said, well, I might as well change clothes. And she's like, let's put on this one. And she changed clothes. So she came back out five minutes later in, in another outfit. outfit for the same song. Wow. Yes. Oh, so like she did the song again, but yes, in another she outfit. She started from the top. She's full out. She's so full out. She's the fillet out. She's the fullest out. <laughs> <laughs> she is. I've I seen mean, her booty full out. I mean, I love it. And mm -hmm. I love this look too, this Marie Antoinette thing. Yeah. It's really, really great. That was from uh Bow Down, right? Mm. But but yeah, other than that, the great summer tour, not summer tours, but current tours. Yeah, that so are going many on. going on. So many. We've got Nicki Minaj who's out. Janet Jackson oh, has yeah. just done some great shows in Asia. She just played Hawaii. Is she doing like smaller venues, Janet? Yes, I think her venues are arenas. Oh, I well, that's not that small. I think she's doing Because one tour she did like theaters. It uh -huh. was super intimate. Yeah. I actually thought that was cool. Yeah, I love it. But the, now she's back to arenas. Yeah, she's okay. doing arenas. That's pretty big. And uh, she looks great. And then, of course, Chris Brown is out, um, as well as Usher. Megan The Stallion is about to go out. And then Usher. It yeah. has a tour that has already sold out <laughs> and an album, you know, and on the heels of his great Super Bowl performance. What did you think about Super Bowl? I thought I had a better appreciation for it. Well, first of all, when I saw it, I was like, wow, it's a little busy. There's a lot going on. It was a lot going There's on, lot especially going in the on. beginning. It was it seems a little messy. It but, was a lot. But busy is a better word. It was a lot. Yeah. But then when I started to really research and I saw all of the, well, first of all, the promotion and the marketing of it was masterful. Yeah. Um, all of the skits he did were super funny. I think Taraji P. Henson was even in one during that time of her sort of yep. most recent scandal. Um, um, disagreement, not a scandal. But I loved that. And so in as part of a whole, I think the performance was outstanding simply because it propelled the tour, the album, the concept of, you know, from Atlanta to the world, it chronicles Usher's rise to stardom in that number when I could really hear him talk about the choices mm -hmm. and why mm -hmm. certain things happen. I had a better appreciation for that, it. You know, because we need to know the why. Yeah. That should be our next show. The yeah. why. The why. Because so many times like when we creative direct a show, we will... There's so many stories and things happening and reasons why we chose this color or yeah. this, what you know. Yeah. But nobody ever knows that. Right. And no, the audience usually doesn't get it. Right. But if you knew, you'd have a greater appreciation I for it. So. And every show does. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's important to know the why. Maybe that's a good new show. Yeah. Good new concept for The us. why. The why. Stay tuned. Not to be confused with the YMCA. Ba-doom. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I just cracked myself up. No, good. Go for but it. So, you know, so there, <laughs> of course there's Usher who, who did great. And there's an album coming and I think it's out already and a tour. So I loved the fact that that rollout yeah. was so extensive. And it was good. I thought his Super Bowl halftime show was um, just a good, soup fun Halftime show. It, was. it wasn't anything like my, like I, cause I thought, I still think Rihanna's last year was like mind blowing. Just this, the floating stages that was just everything. You know, it wasn't even her necessarily. Not that it, she wasn't great. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying it was so wow. Mm-hmm. His was like a regular old fun party, mm-hmm. happy mm-hmm. Super Bowl. Yeah. It was great. It but was. the why, yeah. Is a good one. Gives it more. And you know Rihanna's coming now, too. I did hear that. You told I me that. something teased. Okay, There's that'll be fun. There's to be something in the next couple of days. Mommy with two kids. Right. That, and it'll be interesting to see if how. she if she changes, if yeah. she has a different... Or like how Madonna was a little bit different after her health scare. Yeah. Sometimes motherhood can really yeah. change people. Yeah. That's why I'm sweeter now, because I'm a mother again. Correct. <laughs> so. Best dog mom ever. Ever. I mean, you would seriously kind of die. No, I'm my real. mom wishes she would come back as my dog. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I wish you loved me as much as you love that dog. But you do, just I in do. a different way. No, I do. Yeah, just in a different I way. I love my mom. Yes, Miss Alice. Oh. We lo- we, it's all about the moms, first of all. Oh. You know. So yeah, your mom is with you. Yes. My mom is not. Yeah. I mean, my mom is Miss, with us. Yes. She just lives in a different in, city. So yeah. I call her every night. We talk for an hour every night. Yeah. No, we all love our moms. And um, we met, um, my mom got to meet Jamil's mom, Miss Jewel. Oh. Yeah. It was great. And, you know, she came to, um, Jamil, Jamil and his mother came to uh, the performance we recently did for Kenny Ortega's Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh. And we did um, we did some of his you know highlights. And yeah, I got to perform. Um, was that a carnival? A piece from Jam, uh, a Jam from This Is It. Yes. Okay, a carnival. And so I got to meet Jamil's mother there. But um, yeah. So yeah, the moms are everything. Hey, moms. But I want you to tell me about um, shifting gears a little bit because I know you went to the set the other day. Yes, I did. He went to the set of the new MJ biopic. Mm-hmm. So it's a new film they're making. Mm-hmm. And it's starring Michael's nephew, is it? Nephew, Jafar, yeah. who's Jermaine's son. And so did he was there, obviously. He was there. And was what did great. you think? I thought it was really good. Really? I was, I was very um, pleasantly surprised. I was a little anxious and a little sure. nervous about it's how a it was going to be. Right. Like, you I know? didn't even drive. I Ubered. You, you I, could like, not, I could not. You couldn't concentrate. I could not concentrate. Yeah. So I Ubered there and... and uh, they were filming on Sony, you know, which brings back so many memories yeah. of being with Michael anyway. Yeah. So I already went a little emotional just because we were returning to Sony. Yeah. Um, in Culver City. So, of course, uh, shout out to Rich and Tone who invited me, you know, and it was great. And, um, you know, we've been talking a bit, you know, uh, they, they call me from time to time to just ask questions mm-hmm. about the history. That's nice. You know. Um, which is lovely, and I and I so appreciate that. And then, of course, um, the great Anton Antoine Fuqua is directing. Mm-hmm. We worked together twice. On what? We did a video for Shanice called Somewhere. Yeah. And then we did a series um, called Divas with. Oh Nicole yes! Ari oh, Parker I remember that Townsend. Divas. Yeah. Did we mm-hmm. work on that together? Not really. I think I don't think so. Not that. Okay. Yeah, I think and we Lisa were Nicole Carson. Different. Um, and I kind of feel like Anika Nani Rose was in that too. Really. Maybe she wasn't. Maybe I'm thinking Dream Girls. Yeah, because I just watched Dream Girls the other night. That's <laughs> Maybe because Anika, we first worked with her on um, Justin from Justin Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, and now she's a Which big we Broadway want a Razzie star. For. <laughs> I know. Well, we didn't really, the movie but the did. movie did. Yes, um, but the choreography yeah. was great. It's just that the movie, yeah, was the movie was less than desirable. Less than desirable. But, but, but we had a good time. We had a blast, man. We were on the beach every day. We were tan and ripped, and then every night we did karaoke with Kelly Clarkson and yes. Justin Guarini. Right, honey. We were drinking those <laughs> those frozen drinks, like the Octane from uh, one eighty or whatever from Fat Wet, not, wet it, Willies. It, yeah, it wasn't Fat Tuesdays, but wet one willies. of those things. Wet Willies. I mean, yeah. that was a long time ago. It that was. was the first American Idol. Yes. And it was uh, a movie, year, you know, from, yeah, of the and they winners, made a the movie of yes, the, they did. How hilarious. They never made another one. They sure didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have fun. But anyway, so, um, yeah. So Antoine Fuqua directs, uh, but I wanna, and it was lovely just I to know see a little more about Jafar. So did he do a performance or anything? He did. When you were there? He did. And 
he, he did. felt like and Michael. He felt like Michael. He did. You know, I do think it's smart that they picked him. I don't yes. know how to say this. Oh, it's smart. It's political. It's strategic for sure. But because, you know, uh, otherwise you would be hiring someone that would be sort of impersonating him in a sense. And mm-hmm. it comes off weird sometimes right, like right. it's it's a very fine line i don't know how to say it it's like correct, when we work with tribute artists who we love even if they're very talented the more the i guess the better they are the almost the more awkward it is yes because there's something just off there because you know that's not michael right but they're acting and talking like michael and it just feels weird yes. but with jafar i can imagine it feels more comfortable absolutely it feels a little more natural Right. You know, and so I think, of course, he's been Hmm. training with Rich and Tone. So a lot of the nuance, you know, was able to be conveyed. Um, But he did a great job. He did a great job. I can't wait to see it. So that's out, I think, next spring, 2025. Um, But speaking of Michael and even Rich and Tone, I actually finally saw, I took my mom for her birthday. My sister and I did uh, MJ the Musical. Ah, okay. um, Which is the Broadway show. Mm -hmm. We saw it in San Diego. But... Mm -hmm. um, It was, I I went into it thinking, oh, this is going to be difficult. Uh And actually this picture is why, because um, I'll go back, but it's like, it it looks like it's supposed to be kind of fossy, right? Mm -hmm. But then it's smooth criminal and it's, I don't know. It was just the choreography to me was off. I knew I'd have a problem with it because it's like the Broadway version of Michael, which we know Michael on stage, like, you know, in a concert. And this was just felt way more Broadway. In fact, the choreography felt way more contemporary, like abstract. Like it just didn't what, make like, sense to me. What like me and Michael Celine Dion abstract or not like fluid, like lyrical, more um like weird pictures and shapes. Nothing to do with the song. Nothing to do with anything reminiscent to me visually of Michael. Got it. You know how okay, you so know So there was no signature kind of no um, i mean and the michael was i think rich and tone worked rich and with tone worked with the michael, michael uh-huh. and and he was more michael-esque so yeah, that made the sense michael character but the dancers they were way more broadway yeah but um i, I knew i would have a problem with well, it well christopher wilden the director also choreographed it correct and he's so very talented probably, and yeah. i think he directed it beautifully i mean yeah. there were some really nice moments in there people told me they really liked the story but the story. nobody liked the choreography the story is very good um, the, oh, I want to say about choreography really quick. Mm-hmm. You know, when people said they send them to you a lot, me sometimes, but you know, they'll send us pieces of original choreography mm-hmm. to Michael's music. And sometimes you're like, Whoa, Whoa. this is yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, this is cool. Yeah. It's still very reminiscent of Michael's energy, mm-hmm. but it's just different. It's new. Yeah. And I wish, I wish they would have done something like yeah. that. Yeah. But the show was directed beautifully. There were some, the story was great. Some really nice moments. Um, you know, like they use his music in a different way. For instance, his mom is the one that sings, I'll be there. Okay. So, you know, the mom is got to chill. Yeah. I'll be there for okay. you, Michael. Mm-hmm. So that was like an interesting way to use a song, but then what? thriller. Okay. It came towards the end and it was after Michael and his father had like a situation, an altercation. Uh huh. And because if, uh, if you don't know, Michael's father was known to be pretty strict and mm-hmm, harsh mm-hmm. and, maybe, and aggressive and aggressive and yep. maybe not so nice sometimes. Uh-huh. So then they had this like fight or whatever. And then all the lights went down and it was just Michael and just acapella, mm-hmm. no music, nothing. Mm-hmm. He starts singing thriller <gasps> and it was okay. really about his father hmm. was the monster. Okay. And it was like, Got it was it. pretty emotional. Okay. Like I was, did not expect that. In fact, I can't believe they went there, uh-huh. but I'm so glad that they did. Mm-hmm. So I did, I do think the show is good. Just the choreography was hard for me, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. not that it wasn't good choreography. I just didn't think it made sense in that situation. Yeah. Understood. But see it. Yeah. Because a lot of times, I mean, working with Michael for all these years, I mean, we are always of the mindset, if we're not going to make it better, don't change it. Right. That's what he always said. Because that's what he would insist. He was like, don't change it if you're not going to make it better. Right. You know, so, but yeah, but there was a, just, I suppose, a fresh perspective and a different set of eyes you know, and just another way to tell the story. Yeah, and I was way. excited to see it in through different eyes. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's good. It's worth seeing. It's it's very different, but I'm glad I finally got to see it. Right, so. right. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I, I mean, I hadn't, I haven't seen it. I know. You know, just because I don't know. It's still a little hard for me to 
reconcile the fact that he's not here. I actually got emotional. When? Uh, just being there. Uh-huh. And it wasn't because he's gone. Like, I've come to terms with that, mm-hmm. and I'm okay with that. You know, mm-hmm. I believe he's more peaceful in a better place. Yes. But I got emotional watching, just thinking, wow, like... I was a part of that world. Like, yeah. how is that possible? Like, yeah. it just, it really, it was like this overwhelming amount of gratitude and yeah. emotion. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I cried a couple times. It yeah. wasn't because of the content. It was yeah. because of me. Just the, yes. Yeah. Understood. No, we've been very, very fortunate. We're so fortunate. I mean, you know, I still get little, you know, little indications that I feel, I feel him. I mm-hmm. feel him like when we go to places, the musical play. And I was just working with a young performer who came here from Brazil to study. And, you know, every time we would leave and I get in the car, Michael would come on or really. Yes. And I would That's send cool. I would send in, in Michelle. I would send Michelle a little video and say, ah, look, who, look what's happening. And then it happened to him and his mom when they were headed to the airport. Wow. They were in the car. He sent me a little video and That's Michael cool. was playing. So just little things like that. I mean, I can walk into the grocery store and I'll hear yeah. another part of me. Yeah. You know, just things will it's, happen. It's always fun to hear his music it because is. it just takes you back and yeah. it makes you smile. I still can't do Man yeah. in the Mirror that well, Ugh, though. It's so hard. <laughs> and that's how the show ended. You know, I'm it's sure. like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Because that just brings me right back to yeah. the memorial. Yeah. And it's Because that was so always sad. a hard, hard song to listen to since, yeah. since then. But, yeah, I mean, hey, congratulations to, you know, the cast, you know, and I know that uh, they've just opened on Broadway. Was West End. They opened oh, uh, the, the, in, in yes. London. Yeah, they've just opened in London. On the West End, yeah. Yes. Um, oh, I'm with, sure they're doing great tours all, all over. It's worth seeing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In Rich and Tone, we're just there. So excited nice. for them. So excited for them. But yeah, so what else are we talking well, about? Well, I know, I know it's about on? time to wrap up, but yes. Jamil, because I always look forward to this. Yeah. Every week, Jamil mm-hmm. is going to surprise us uh-huh. with a picture. Okay. And then we get to say whether we think it's full out. Or get out. Oh, yes. Let's. So what do you got for us, Jamil? All right. Well, of course, full out. Oh, Madonna. Full Duh. out. Yes. I love the halo yeah. around. No, what? You saw it because I didn't see this. Do you know what song this was? Do you yes, remember? This is Nothing Really Matters. This is the opening number. This is the opening number. Yeah. And it's awesome because it sets you up for the show. It's also, it's the perfect song to start this perfect show for her. And this perf- this look is perfect for the message. Awesome. So tell me, what is the message here? It's that nothing really matters. Love is all we need. Okay. Everything I give you all comes back to me. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I used to be so selfish. I used to think it was all about me. Now I realize it's about love and the collective. Wow. And she just sort of rotates on this. made the stage rotates like when we have in Japan. Yep. And she's just in this amazing, super gorgeous taffeta creation with crystals all over it. And, you know, she just sort of, is there it's very um ethereal mm-hmm. it's very um it's very spiritual it's very aware mm-hmm. it's good okay well full out it's so full out i think this is full out you got anything out. else for us jamil uh always full out beyonce, beyonce that is full now, out what do y'all think about the the country the country album you know yeah i wanted to ask you that too yeah. earlier because cowboy carter just came out there's a little bit of controversy about a it a lot right? of bit of controversy i mean and why do you think well first of all we can you can leave it up jamil because i think it's important to see that that imagery and that really this is to be a little political it is reclaiming an art form that had historically been black. Okay. Right? So blues music, country music, mm-hmm. some of those are sort of, those are born out of the black experience early in America. Mm-hmm. Right? And so because country is now this very white establishment, yes. white male establishment mm-hmm. to be um, particular, yes. um, there has always been this sort of like you're not welcome thing mm-hmm. with outsiders. Mm-hmm. So when Beyonce performed, I think it was about 10 years ago with the chicks, they're now called the chicks, right? Not the, not the chicks. Dixie chicks. Cause yeah, when she performed daddy lessons, her song with them mm-hmm. at the country music awards, it did not go over well. Hmm. And she had some country luminaries actually get up and walk out during the performance. Well, that's rude. I think that stuck with her. Mm-hmm. And so she started to work on a piece that was 
a social I think it's I think it's meant to speak to the sort of social norms, social class. Yep. I think it was to remind people that no, music is music, and in fact, country music actually started someplace else and had been appropriated by another group. So now I am going to show you how I can do a version of country that is contemporary, that is still funky, that's hip, young. Mm -hmm. It's going to open the genre up to other artists, mm -hmm. you know, and make it an easier sort of situation. And what I found out and what I feel like is happening by calling it Cowboy Carter mm -hmm. is that she is saying that, no, I'm going to inhabit this male energy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do these country songs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have Dolly Parton and Willie Nelson on my album. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get Post Malone. I think Miley did one too. Miley, that's my favorite song. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite song so far with Miley um, and Beyonce. And she has systematically sort of hit all the boxes that are going to be necessary for her to be in the contention for album of the year, mm. which she's never won at the Grammys. Which is so she's crazy. She's the most awarded artist with the most Grammys. But, but never that award. Never that. It's always been reserved for a usually white, mm -hmm. male or female, mm -hmm. but it's not been, you've not seen an album of the year in forever. I don't know if you ever have, you know, from, from an artist of color. Um, could be wrong, but I mean, Michael won it, didn't he? I for Thriller, think so. I'm sure, he but he's had also a man. Have. Yeah, I don't know if there's yeah. been a, a black was, woman. And that might have been the '80s. Well, yeah, I mean? that was so, that was definitely the '80s. So it's been so many decades since that there's been that kind of recognition, and she's never gotten it. She's always come close, and she's always had people get on stage and say that she should have won it, right. like Adele, mm -hmm. you know, and others who could not believe they won it over her. Mm -hmm. So. It's got a tinge of racism, although it's not blatant, mm -hmm. right? So what she's doing in this in this album is really sort of turning the reflection back on us and saying, why is this the norm? Mm -hmm. Why has this become the norm? Mm -hmm. Because I can get into these spaces, but you still don't recognize me. Mm -hmm. So this, by inhabiting this male form, doing this country music, putting it out the way she has with the collaborations that she has. Yes. She's basically delivering a foolproof project that now if this can't win, mm -hmm. there's a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. And it's, and I read a lot of uh, backstory too. And I think this country album was ready to come out before Renaissance. Oh really? Yes. Oh, yeah, and she did her that. Plan, one. Her plan was to, I think, I read. I could be wrong. Be have let me know. Let us know in the comments below. But I read that this had stuck with her for almost a decade. Hmm. And she'd been working on it, and then, of course, during the pandemic, when we had those years off, she really dug in and finished all these visions. Mm -hmm. And the country one was meant to come first because of the Grammy stuff, and you could see how she just was snubbed. For the Renaissance album that just happened. Right. She got snubbed again, but showed up in a country look, knowing that less than a week from then, there'd be two country singles plus a whole country rollout. It's been very methodical. Mm -hmm. but she I think, always is. Yeah. She's always very, very thoughtful. But even in that moment, it proved her point is that she had the biggest record and tour of the year. Yep. Right. With 145 costumes, mm -hmm. <laughs> three yeah. stages, yeah, you know, millions in production, but still didn't get recognized yeah. like that. And so she showed up in this, I think this Louis Vuitton by uh, Pharrell. Oh, yeah. It looks in this like country it. look. And people didn't understand why. <laughs> why? Yeah. Especially me. I was like, well, I, 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 it is I, foreshadowing. It was. Mm -hmm. It was. And that outfit had two looks. She showed up in pants and changed in the shorts. Oh, <laughs> because she wears a is lot of clothes. She out. likes to wear a lot of clothes. Clearly. So, you know, that was. And the thing is, we've been looking at Easter eggs for the country album, for the fragrance, for all these things from Renaissance. She, mm -hmm. Her first costume was the bottle of the fragrance, mm -hmm. you know, she's been doing these sort of heightened country looks in Renaissance that we just thought, why it was, it was breadcrumbs mm -hmm. leading us up to this moment. Full out. So she is so full, full out. out. And I also read that she's not calling, she's like, this isn't a country album. This right. is a Beyonce album. Period. Yeah. I, I think I said that right. Yes, yeah. you did. Yeah. You did exactly right. Cause it's really kind of reclaiming the genre. 
Mm -hmm. really in yeah. her way. So crazy, isn't it? To like, I don't know that many, I'm so glad we had this conversation because I don't know that many people would know or remember that where country music began yeah. and how for so many decades, decades, mm -hmm. it's been a white, very white situation. And now there's a couple black artists, mm -hmm. black country artists, mm -hmm. And, you know, people make a big deal out of yep. it because it's like, wow, we've got a black country artist. Right. And it's like. But when you go back to Charlie so Pride, weird, right? when you go to, you know, Ray Charles, you know, there have been many, um, you know, black artists that did country albums, mm -hmm. but none of them had the profile that Beyonce has. Right. She's the right person to sort of usher in this new era and to really help a lot of country artists who are struggling to get their music heard because mm -hmm. there are. You know, K. Michelle, there are others who have literally moved to Nashville mm -hmm. to work on their records, yeah. but nobody knows about them. Right. I think the only reason we know about Darius Rucker is because of Hootie and the Blowfish. Right. You know, but he's been doing country music for decades, mm -hmm. but I've never heard any of it. No, I've never heard any you of know? it either. So this is going to be interesting. And it is. And Beyonce, you're full out for yes, many you reasons. Are. Thank for you. For many so much. reasons. Yeah. I'm so glad we had this conversation. Yes, it makes sense. And, and she's thought about it. And I think there's another act coming, a third act. Okay. So we'll see what that is. But I read something that was so interesting. It was like this woman has had the ability, she's had time to do an entire tour. Release an entire record, do an entire tour, take a month off, release another record, plan another tour, all while releasing a cologne, a, a fragrance, and a hair care line. <laughs> She's the That's hardest working woman in show business, mm -hmm. really. With a very good team, I suspect. Yeah, clearly. Yes. Clearly. But anyway. Well, that's, I'm happy to be on that. your team. We are all that. We are always a team. We are. We are. We are the real Travis and Stacy. Yes. And follow us on the show shows. We are the real Travis and Stacy on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. And we are Travis Stace on Twitter. And now it appears we're on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are. So please leave a comment. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about. You know, we definitely love to hear from you. And thank you so much for being with us. Yes. And remember, if you're not full out. Then get out. We'll see you next time. No question. Bye.